Hi, on this week's episode, Dr. Nate Freeman is going to share a message titled King Me. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Transforming Culture with the love and word of God. This is Authenticity. Amen. So in in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, this morning I am reading out of the King James Version. If it was good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. That was a joke. The King James Version came out after Paul. Um, But but, but today, uh, that's what I'm reading out of. But but this was Paul. This is the Apostle Paul's letter. This is part of his letter to the Corinthian church. And this is what he said. He said, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. I want you to know today we're living in a day. We're living in an hour. We are living in a time where people do not know where to turn. Up is no longer up anymore. Down is no longer down. We don't, you know, things that we thought we can count on, we can no longer count on anymore. But one thing that I know for certain is that you that God's word never changes. That we can put our faith in him, that God is unchangeable, that his promises are true, that what he said he would do, He's going to do. And the only reason there is confusion is that the, the, that Satan comes in just as Satan did as he entered, as, as he entered the serpent, as the serpent came to Adam and Eve. And he made Eve, she was deceived or confused at what God's word was. God said that if you eat of the tree of the of the of the tree tree of if you eat of the fruit of the tree of good of, of the knowledge of good and evil, that you shall surely die. But but what Satan told her was that if you even touch it. So as they came to the, as they, as she was at the tree and she touched it, she thought she believed she sinned already, and when she didn't fall dead to the ground. Then she proceeded to eat, and Adam proceeded to eat as well. And and here we have the first sin of mankind. And and, and man's response always when in sin is to hide from God. Where God wants us, our response to be to come to him. Now, we know that God is all-knowing. How many believe God's all-knowing? in here. You believe that God's all known as the Bible says he is? He knows all things. So when he, you can't play hide and seek with God. Be like trying to play, trying to throw a surprise birthday party for Sherlock Holmes. Just doesn't work. So when God walked into the, came into the midst of the garden and he said, Adam, where are you? God all all of a sudden did not have amnesia. God didn't, God wasn't surprised or or, or he, Adam and Eve didn't pull the all time scam of all the ages and, and, and was able to hide from God. But when God said these words, he said, Adam, where are you? It was a clarion call to Adam's soul to have Adam understand where he was in relationship to God. Hiding from the Father. Separated from the Father. In disobedience from the Father. And and here, death was not immediate. And and, And this is what I want to tell you this morning. Just because... Judgment is delayed does not mean that judgment is denied. And every unrepented sin will be judged. 
And so it's God's goodness that he that that sin is revealed. It's God's goodness that he sheds light on the dark areas of our heart and our soul. Because he desires this relationship with each and every one of us. So confusion today does not come from God. Confusion today is only man's confusion because it has gotten away from God in his word. And just as Adam and Eve stood in the garden, Adam was silent. And my, my, my charge to the church this morning is not to be silent. It's time to speak. It's time to believe. It's time to stand on God's word. The title of my message this morning is called King Me. King Me. How many played checkers before? You, you get to the other side of the board and you say, King Me, because you made it to the other side. Well, let us turn to the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 2. Wait, no, 1 Kings, chapter number 1. We're going to start in verse 5. So 1 Kings, if you're not sure where it is, it's right before 2 Kings. Okay. It's in the Old Testament. And I don't know how, how, how far we'll get through this this morning. I'll have you in time, home in time for the cookout that you plan, or maybe the inside activity that you're going to do because it's 48 degrees outside. I'm just giving you guys time to turn there. If you're there, say amen. 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 Okay, First Kings chapter 1, verse 5, it says, then Ad, Ad, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared the chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time any time and saying, why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man and his mother bare him after Absalom. So at this point in first Kings chapter one, King David had become a very old man. And there was, there, was a, there was a bunch of discussion during this time as to who would be the next king of, of Israel. Now, Absalom, as many of you, those who, of you that don't know, Absalom was the one that had rised up in rebellion against to kill David to become the king of Israel. Now his brother would be the next king. Abinadab appointed himself the king. And he invited all of the people except Solomon, except the prophet Nathan. And if you guys remember, Nathan was the prophet that came to David and told him, King David, you are in error. You have sinned. You have committed adultery and you've committed murder. Now, this is a man. Now, we talked about David before. We, 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 we discussed that he was a man after God's own heart, even though he, he had done all these deeds that surely would have him be killed and separated from, from God forever. But he was a man. Even in the Old Testament, we see the grace of God 
in a heart that was after God. But here's King David from the inception as being introduced as king, was not invited to the party, was not represented at this party to replace him to be the king. Now, I want to tell you, some of you, your whole life, you've been upset because you haven't been invited to the party. Your whole life, you felt like you might have been an outcast. Maybe even right now, you feel like, where do I belong? Where is my place? And I want you to know that God has a place for you at his table. He has a place for you in his kingdom. He has a place for you where the evil one can touch you not. But from the, from, from the beginning, David had to battle to be where he was. He had to come against the world and its system. He had, to, he had to fight the good fight of faith. Even in his, even knowing that he was anointed to be the next king, he had reverence for King Saul. And even though King Saul wanted to kill him, and he had an opportunity to take his enemy out, David obeyed the Lord. He said I, that I shall not touch God's anointed. And I want, to know, I want you to know this morning, you better be careful about who you open up your mouth about because you do not want to be in opposition to God's anointed. You don't want to be on the other side of that fence because as, as Saul found out later on, as he conjured up the spirit, as he conjured up Samuel from the dead, Samuel said, why have you done such a horrible thing? He said, well, I want you to tell me what's going to happen next. He said, I'm going to tell you this much. Tomorrow, you will join me on the other side of eternity. See, when we are in opposition to God and what he wants to do, it breeds death. There's no life in it. Life comes from what the devil meant for bad. God will turn it into good for those who what? Love God. Well, if we can't love his creation, if we can't love his people, and not just his people in the church, I'm talking about his people, his creation in all the world. If we can't walk in love, if you're not praying for our leadership, you're in error. Well, I'm not that. I didn't vote for him. I, that's not what the Bible says. It says to pray. See, it's not, if we, we need to learn how to stay in our lane. And whether you agree with whatever or not, it doesn't say you have to be in agreement. It says to what? Pray. Pray. And you know what I found out? The more you pray for somebody, the less you have hatred in your heart toward them. The more you pray for somebody, the more you begin to see that individual, that person, or that circumstance and situation, the more you begin to see it from God's perspective. And we know this to be true from Nehemiah as he built the wall. And, he, and they call him the watchman. And he, he was up in his spot. And he saw, he got the perspective of the lay of the land. And he saw what the, what the enemy was going to do. He saw what uh, Sam Ballot was going to do. And he was able to 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 stop the enemy in his tracks. And the reason why some of us can't see what is happening to us is because we're not in our proper place in praying and, and being watchmen. Because we're preoccupied with the, the speck in other people's eyes and we're not concentrating on the force that's growing in our own eyes. 
And as we continue to humble ourselves before a God, then that then the more we can walk in the authority that he has given us to walk in on this earth. Because when we walk in that authority, God, that is where God establishes his kingdom. So here we have, have you know, here... Uh, Adonijah, he had, he had this feast. He invites everybody to the table except for Bathsheba, except for the prophet Nathan, except for uh, uh, Solomon. And he did not invite the mighty men of David. And we talked about, about them a, f- a couple of weeks ago. So why is that? Because he knew that there would be opposition. And he knew that if he could sneak himself in there to be king, if he could do it some other backhanded way, that he could make those individuals be dissenters or or, or be the ones that are in opposition, and then they would never have access to the throne. But remember, God always has a plan. And God always has a way to get what it is that he wants accomplished accomplished in the world today. And that's through what? Believing and receiving his word. I thought I'd at least get one amen there. (laughs) So let's go down to verse... um, 32. This is after Bathsheba Bathsheba goes in and reminds King David that you promised me that my son Solomon would be the heir. And remember, up to this point, David had been silent publicly. But what does David say? What does King David say in verse 32? It says this. And King David said, call, call me uh, Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and, 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 ben, and Benazah and the son of Je- Jehoiada. And they came back and they came before the king. And the king also said unto them, take with you the servants of your Lord and cause Solomon, my son, to ride upon my own mule and bring him down to, uh, to Gihon. And, and let Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, anoint him there king over Israel, and blow ye with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. And the underwriting theme here is David spoke up. David spoke and said, do this and this will happen. Tell the priest and the prophet to say this, And this will happen. And what God is telling you, he tells you to do what? Speak to the mountain that's in your life and what? Cast it in the sea. Tell it where to go. Stop playing mother may I with the devil. See, the devil is having havoc in our country, in our community, in our state, all around us, however he wants to, because Those who have the authority to speak have decided to be silent. And see, if you if you ever play checkers, this is a kid's game playing checkers. But you know the thing is, if you get your if you get your your piece to the other side of the board and you don't say the words king me, guess what happens? You just got another piece of you just have a checker on the board. 
But see, when you have a king, when you say king me, then they have to put another piece on the board on top of that one. And that piece can go where it wants, when it wants, and how it wants to when it's its turn to move. And guess what, church? It's our turn to move. It's your turn to move. It's your turn to speak. It's your turn to talk to your situation and remind it the same way that Bathsheba reminded King David. It's time for you to, re- to wake yourself up as king and remind your situation who the king is. And say, you know what? I take authority here. And David took his, because David said, guess what? It may be the, in the late night hour. It might be fourth down and long. It may be a few seconds on the clock. But guess what? I'm still the king. And what I say goes. And see, when we take this attitude, now, now don't get me wrong. You don't get in rebellion with it. It's within the word of God. It's in what God said, you want to see this church full, it's not going to be full talking about who's not here. It's going to be full speaking who should be here. It's going to be full when we take when we take oil and we begin to pray over these seats before Sunday morning and ask God, Lord, fill these with souls and people that need to hear your word. Because where one puts a thousand to flight, two puts ten thousand to flight. And God's looking for some Bathshebas to remind the king of what he will do in this land. Of the promise that he made. We have to to remind your body every morning. Hey, you are made to function because by his stripes, body, you were healed. You have to remind your bank account. So I mean, you need to get your wallet and your checkbook out and speak to that thing. Now, here's the thing. If you're not obedient, if you're not faithful with the little, God can't give you more. And see, some of us said, well, when I get, when I get my money right, I'll start to do this. Well, that's no different than saying, man, when I get my life right, I'm going to come to church. No, Jesus said, come to me as you are. Come to me with what you have. Well, Jesus, all I have is a nickel. All I got in my pocket is a mint. Well, you tied that mint. I'm telling you what, you own a candy factory. Say he won't. Say he won't. Either the whole word is true or none of it's true. Either your sins are forgiven or they're not forgiven. Either you're healed or you're not healed. Either you're, but do, 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 I, I, I'm believing this is getting through to somebody this morning. I'm praying that you, because because I, I know this works. I'm living proof that it works. You're living proof that it works. Because of all of the, in the reproductive system, of all of the things that could have happened, you were one in a million. You made it through all that. You made it through every circumstance in your life. God brought you to this time for this season for this reason. And my question to us, are we going to exercise our authority and be the people that God called us to be? Or are we going to shy away from it because it doesn't fit our quote-unquote religion. Because see, the peace, when it says that, that, that God is not the author of confusion, and peace com- that, that peace comes to those who rest in him, it's not talking about avoiding conflict. Now, I'm not saying to start strife. What, I, what, what, what I'm challenging you is, is in this, is you can have a false sense of peace. Just like Samson had a false sense of peace. Because why? He was satisfying his flesh laying there with um, Delilah to the point that the Bible said that Samson knew not 
that the Spirit of the Lord had departed from him. And see, we have churches all over the place that have people in it, but they have a form of godliness, but they have no power. But I know what? I know a place. I know some people that know how to get a hold of God. I know some people that, that, that during a pandemic, their businesses flourished. I know some people that during the pandemic, God sustained them and they grew. I know people during a pandemic that never got this coronavirus. I know people who got the virus, but that are still living. I'm not making light of any of it. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying any of this, but I'm saying that that I know that those who believe and receive and speak the word of God receive a king's reward. I want us to turn. I said I was, I'm going to keep this brief today. But Acts chapter 11, if we turn over there to Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Help me, Jesus. When you're there, say amen. This is the acts of the the apostles, right? This this isn't the acts of the Holy Spirit. These are the acts of the individuals. And I want to remind you, Jesus Christ has done to do for you. God has done what he's going to do. The Holy Spirit is doing what he's going to do for you. But you, we have to do what it is that God is telling us to do. So here in verse verse 26 in Acts chapter 11, it says this. It says, and when he had found him, he, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. They were called Christians. This is the first time, 11 chapters later, that in Antioch, after spending a year with the disciples, they were called, and all those who believed, and and, and they taught, They taught them the gospel that Jesus Christ said he came, he saves, he heals, he delivers, that he died on the third day and rose again, and that 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 the Holy Spirit was given to these to to us as, as as people. And they saw great miracles happen.